Hello everyone, I hope you're having a good evening. I came across this and wanted to share it with you all. Um, it seems that the toxicology reports for David, Clayton, and Ricky are in, and Kansas City Police has them. Um, has not been released to the public yet. I do have a question though. Where's Mr. Perserno since um since these toxicology reports came in? I haven't seen him on News Nation, on Fox or local KC news up there. Um and isn't it also crazy that the day after Jordan puts himself in rehab, the toxicology reports come back? Too bad it's voluntary and not involuntary. You to follow breaking news here at five as we learn more about the deaths of three men found in the backyard of a Northland home. I'm John Holt. And I'm Christelle Bell. The toxicology report is in police hands tonight. Fox Force Malik Jackson joins us now live from KCPD headquarters. Malik, what are you learning about that report that's out? John and Christelle, we have confirmed with multiple sources that the families of Clayton McGinney, Ricky Johnson, and David Harrington were notified earlier this afternoon by detectives that the toxicology report is complete. Now, it is important to note that these reports are very detailed, so what has been given to these families is preliminary. But what we do know is that there were several substances found to be in these men's bodies, including the present. Several substances. Several, multiple, more than just the one he's about to say right now, you guys. ...of cocaine. Now let's take a step back here because we were given the timeline about six to eight weeks as to when we would get these results back. We haven't even passed the fourth week mark just yet. Moving forward, this will allow KCPD to finish their investigation and pass this case off to prosecutors. It's crucial that we know that this comes one day after these families in fact met with the prosecuting attorney there in Platte County. After that meeting concluded, these families said that they were satisfied and one day later, here we are with these reports. We reached out to KCPD. They had little to say about this development, but they did confirm that they have been in contact with these men's families. Now, there is uh, an important person when we talk about next steps, and that is Jordan Willis, the man who lived inside of this home. Yesterday, we reported that he checked into rehab, and now we have these toxicology reports um, detailing what may have happened to his three friends. We also do know from a source that they have determined a cause of death, but they have not released that just yet. We reached out to Jordan Willis's attorney, and at this time, we have have not heard back. Surprise, surprise. I will say this. I honestly think that it may have been laced with um, F. Um, I've never done C. However, I don't think it would do that to you unless it had some, a downer mixed with it or something, and then the alcohol. I'm not sure, but you legal beagles out there, can you let me know if Jordan could be responsible for any charge because the tragedy happened at his house, even though he claims to be sleeping and didn't know they were there for two days until the police came and was like, um... What's this? What's this body you got on your back porch? I don't know. I went to sleep. They left. I let my le my friend leave without a jacket. All their cars was on side the road. My neighbors noticed the cars, but I didn't. Malik, what are you learning about that report? These men's bodies, including the presence of cocaine. Now let's take a step back here because we were given the timeline about six to eight 
weeks as to when we would get these results back. We haven't even passed the fourth week mark just yet. Moving forward, this will allow KCPD to finish their investigation and pass this case off to prosecutors. It's crucial that we know that this comes one day after these families, in fact, met with the prosecuting attorney there in Platte County. After that meeting concluded, these families said that they were satisfied. And one day later, here we are with these reports. We reached out to KCPD. They had little to say about this development, but they did confirm that they have been in contact with these men's families. Now, there is uh, an important person when we talk about next steps, and that is Jordan Willis, the man who lived inside. I am happy that the families are okay with the meaning they had with the prosecutors. I hope that the prosecutors and the city of Kansas City um, can help these families. I'm not sure in what kind of way, but hopefully some kind of justice will be done once we realize what exactly happened inside of this home. Yesterday we reported that he checked into rehab and now we have these toxicology reports um, detailing what may have happened to his three friends. We also do know from a source that they have determined a cause of death but they have not released that just yet. We reached out to Jordan Willis's attorney and at this time we have not heard back. John, Christelle. Well, Nick, you mentioned uh, recently we were thinking six to eight weeks on this toxicology report which is pretty typical all of a sudden it shows up. Any indication as to why? Was it, was it expedited for some reason? That's a question that we at this time really don't have an answer to because as you know through our reporting we had reached out to the medical examiner multiple times and each time we reached out they had the same line that no one person's death is more important than another person's death. So this, this was going to take the standard amount of time from six to eight weeks but as we mentioned this is less than four weeks and you know this case has drawn national attention and it has been um, very... The article I do believe I read, said that um, we, the citizens, community in our country, even worldwide, is what made the expedition of this, um, do these documents. Um, also, real quick, while I'm thinking about it, I would like to thank Malik Jackson for the reporting he has done on this case he has been on the ball every day all day he's done an amazing job um, very important for police and for prosecutors to get these results as far as what the next steps would be. But again, it, you'd have to believe that they did expedite this process because from everything we heard since the day that these men were found is that these reports would take six to eight weeks. But again, here we are, less than four weeks from when they were found in the backyard of that Northland home, we have these toxicology reports. That the... Um, don't have the autopsy reports right now. Um, they may have the cause of death, but they don't have the cause of toxicology. I mean, I am sorry. They have the toxicology reports and the cause of death, but they're saying they don't have the autopsy reports yet. Um, Fox 4 has confirmed police have received the toxicology report Thursday from the investigation into three Kansas City men found dead outside a Northland home last month. Family members of David Harrington, Clayton McKinney, and Ricky Johnson told Fox 4 they learned that police received the report and Kansas City police confirmed they had been in contact with the family. There have been no additional details of this case revealed to any media, nor are there any plans to at this time. Therefore, they are planning on not giving the autopsy results, the results, the cause of death, and the toxicology reports. The case remains an ongoing death investigation, a KCPD spokesperson said Thursday. Both KCPD detectives 
and the Platte County Prosecutor's Office have been in touch with the deceased men's families and remain in contact with them as the investigation unfolds. Fox 4 is still working to obtain a copy of the toxicology report. It will determine if there were any substances, including alcohol, drugs, and more, were found in the three men's systems at the times of their death. Harrington, McGinney, and Johnson went to their friend Jordan Willis' home to watch the Kansas City Chiefs' final regular season game on January 7th. They were found dead two days later outside the rental home near Northwest 83rd Terrace and North Overland Drive in Kansas City. Willis's attorney, John Paserno, said there was a fifth person hanging outside at the home Sunday night. That fifth friend said when he left, the three victims and Willis were still awake. According to the family members, that fifth friend, Alex, is a very good friend of David, Ricky, and Clayton, like since high school friends, um, childhood friends. Fox 4 learned the three men were still alive in the wee hours of Monday morning, maybe as early as 1.30 a.m. It wasn't until late Tuesday night that McGinney's fiancé went looking for him, eventually broke into the home and found a body. When police arrived, Willis opened the door and officers found the other two bodies. His attorney issued a statement saying Willis had no idea his friends were dead outside. Paserno also said multiple times, the only messages Willis received from the men's families were via Facebook Messenger. He didn't receive any text messages or calls. Well, did you check your Facebook Messenger messages, sir? Did you read it? If you read it, did you respond? Uh, no, you didn't. But the fifth friend's attorney, Andrew Tail, disputes part of that saying sometime Tuesday his client texted Willis after he got messages from McGinney's fiancé and Johnson's mother. The fifth friend never received a response, his attorney said. Fox 4 asked Paserno about this discrepancy, and he declined to comment. Willis has since moved out of the home, and according to Fox News, has checked into rehab to address his problem with addiction. Thank God that he is getting help. But it's such a sad situation that it had to happen due to the loss of three guys. Despite getting the toxicology report back, it's unclear when police will receive the autopsies from the medical examiner's office. That could take several more weeks, according to the medical examiner. I knew I read that somewhere. Platt County Prosecuting Attorney Eric Zan said at this time they're still waiting for Kansas City police to conclude their portion of this investigation. In the meantime, Harrington, McGinney, and Johnson's families met with the Platte County prosecutor on Wednesday. An attorney for Johnson's family said they now feel as though this is being taken serious, not only by police, but also by the prosecutors. Thank you, Lord Jesus. This is something we needed to see two weeks ago, most three weeks ago. I want to see what action is being taken, and that's most important. What action is being taken, said Caleb McGinney, the cousin of Clayton McGinney.